thank you so much, Ranjit sir, uh, for giving me opportunity uh, to the uh, to investigation. Uh, this is Dr. Professor uh, at Department of Forensic Science at Government Institute of Forensic Science, Nagpur. I proudly mentioned over here that this is the first and only forensic science institute in India to be ranked in the uh, 101 and 150 band in the prestigious NIRF ranking. So, uh, begin with the uh, introduction of fingerprint examination and APU investigation. Uh, fingerprints are the impression of friction ridges on the distant phalanx of the fingers and thumb. They are often the most important means of identification found at various crime scenes, such as murder, theft, decorating, rape, burglary, property dispute cases, and question documents. Uh, fingerprints are distinctive feature of individuals and are one of the oldest and most widely accepted forensic science, uh, forensic evidence used to establish personal identity. Uh, fingerprints, especially uh, thumb impression, are used in the place of signature in India. In many important documents, such as wills, sale deed, uh, notarized document, bank check, bank documents, property documents, uh, competitive examination documents, and attendance forms. Basically, fingerprints can be either partially identified or completely identified. So what is partial identification? Partial identification implies ascertainment of certain only certain important uh, information about the identity, like sex, age, stature, race, etc., while others still remain unknown. In the complete identification means the absolute fixation of the identity of a person. Basically, the most successful approach for identification utilizes a combination of more than one method. Among the number of parameters available for establishing the identity of an individual, fingerprints are considered to be the most precise and reliable indicators of personal and sex identification. Moving ahead, examination of fingerprints. Uh, the fingerprints are compared using the different levels of detail like level one, level two, level three of comparison. Uh, in the first level details, the examiner studies the overall pattern and sub-pattern and the entire flow of ridges. In the second level of details involves the study of ridge characteristics, which is commonly known as minutia identification. In the third level of details, which includes the study of the position of force and details of ridge. The position of force is known as horoscopy and the details of ridge is known as edgescopy. Uh, edges. These are unique features in terms of position, number, sequencing, and configuration. So, uh, ACEV approach. ACEV is a method used to determine or examine the fingerprint samples. The method of examination was described by the scientific working group for friction ridge analysis, study and technology documents. ACEV's work is a tool in the hand of the expert to examine questions uh, fingerprint samples with standard with specific phase of phases of examination. So ACEV is a method that includes analysis, comparison, evaluation, and verification of the examination of, of prints. So what is analysis? 
I briefly explain this to you because it is already covered in the previous lecture. So, and briefly, I will I would like to explain what is analysis. Analysis is the method of evaluation of prints as is as it present on the surface. Whether it is suitable for comparison or may use for comparison. If an expert found that prints are not suitable for comparison due to low quality of the details or inadequate features required for comparison, such type of prints is considered as not suitable for comparison. In the next step, comparison, uh, this involves a direct side-by-side -side comparison of question sample with standard sample. This involves matching the features present in both the samples to assess the agreement and disagreement between the question and standard. In the evaluation step, this is a method of formulation of conclusion based on the analysis and comparison of the friction skin ridge. In this phase, the examiner can determine whether the question sample and standards are from the same origin or different. This step confirms that the prints are suitable for individualization. Fourth step, that is a verification step, which is very important. Uh, it is the step of analysis of fingerprints by another independent qualified examiner to reach the same conclusion. This phase involves the application of analysis, comparison, and evaluation separately of a known and unknown prints without the knowledge of the previous result. It is the rechecking. It is the rechecking process to exclude intra and inter-observer variability. This concept is very important uh, for research point of view. If you are able to uh, determine the inter and inter-observer variability, so your, so your research will be uh, good and um, that will help for the further research process. This is one of the interesting concept that is cognitive bias. And it is very, very important to understand by every forensic expert uh, in any field, whether it is related to fingerprints or not. So what is cognitive bias? Cognitive bias is a broad term that includes a variety of process that may lead to inaccurate judgment or interpretation. Cognitive biases can affect memory, reasoning, and decision-making. decision, decision making. Although uh, forensic examiner are the main factors in deciding whether to pattern, share, and identical source, we have to understand the factors that, that the form their perception, judgments, and decision-making over the years, many researchers have identified uh, this observer effect, which render fingerprint examiner prone to making inaccurate conclusions and results. Observers' effect imitate the psychological assumption that desired and expectations have the measurable influences on the human observer's perception and their interpretation. So what happened? Uh, what is the outcome of the observation? That cannot only depend upon the features of the object which they are observing, but that also depends upon the mood of the observer and the condition of the uh, condition in which he is observing the evidence. So these things are very important. Their mood, their perception, their thought at, uh, at the time of uh, examining the evidences is very important. So I, uh, now I'm going to show you uh, this picture. So you have quickly identified them and write it in the chat box if it is open for you. What did you see in this picture? Yeah. 
what did you see in this picture some of you saw the face of the duck and some of you saw the face of rabbit yes okay i am going to show you this another picture answer quickly what do you see up in this picture okay those who are messaging that this is duck i in the early picture uh, i am saying that if you saw from the right side of the picture this is a rabbit from the left side it is duck but uh, from the right side it is looking like a rabbit okay in the next picture inverted triangle somebody wrote inverted triangle do you see a white triangle yes see now you can see it although it is not clear although it is not there but since now i have told you you do see it every time you look at the picture start looking from my point of view this is an interesting concept we cannot unsee things once we have seen them this is very important for us as forensic expert as well as fingerprint examiner and there is no one black triangle okay moving on try to identify the pattern of this fingerprint it is partial print what do you see let's make it a bit easier what is it a loop radial loop annular loop quickly write in a chat box now what do you see surprise shocked amazed did you understand what happened here as forensic as forensic expert we are often required to work on partial prints so let's try to understand what did this happen why did and why did this happen now it is twin loop so 
cognitive bias in fingerprints. Researchers have increasingly studied the role that cognitive bias can play in fingerprint examiner decision making. Fingerprint examiner do make, uh, do make mistakes, some of which can be attributed to sets, set of fundamentally co uh, human cognitive bias that we all share. Uh, this is the famous case, the case of Brandon Mayfield. However, a illustration of fingerprint ad uh, identification errors and their consequences. I believe that may many of you would have read about it earlier. This case involved perhaps the most high profile, embarrassing fingerprint mistake in the history. Mayfield, an attorney from Portland, was incorrectly linked to a 2004 terrorist bombing in Madrid, Spain. Fingerprint examiner from the FBI determined with 100% certainty that this fingerprints match uh, fingerprints found at the scene of the bombing. These determinations were in fact inaccurate. Although Mayfield uh, fingerprints were extremely similar to the uh, fingerprints found at the crime scene, but the set of fingerprints did not match each other. Even in his uh, communication with the authorities, Mayfield was adamant that he was in the United States where, uh, when bombing occurred. He had never been uh, to Spain at that time, but he was forced to spend two weeks in the jail as a material witness to the bombing. Only after Spanish authority located another suspect did the FBI admit to uh, make, uh, make the mistakes, a mistake and release the Mayfield. And for that, they have to uh, eventually settle with Mayfield for about uh, two lakhs dollars. So, what is the problem associated with cognitive bias? One of the major problems underlying many fields of forensic science, including fingerprint identification, is that they may fail to implement research methods that are characteristically associated with validated research science. Claim made by experts are typically either based on formal data collection, nor grounded in research that is subject to peer review and publication standards. This is one of the reasons. Fingerprint examiner is numerous, uh, in numerous laboratories are thus constantly exposed to the information that is outside of their own domain. That is outside the scope of whatever information is necessary to conduct uh, their forensic testing. So, domain extraneous information. This is very important uh, concept to understand uh, re regarding this cognitive uh, bias. What are the extraneous information? Information re uh, regarding additional evidence linking a suspect to a crime. Information regarding whether the suspect confessed or had any alibi. Other information regarding the suspect, such as details about the suspect's prior conviction uh, or gang affiliation. This is problematic because recent empirical research has shown that exposure to such domain extraneous information result in cognitive biases that can potentially influence the fingerprint examiner result. Few examples I would like to share, like if a police or officer informing an expert that the suspect was seen holding the item on which the questioned fingerprint was found, if the verifying expert is aware that the original examiner has already identified the fingerprint to the suspect, 
these conditions often influence or create a bias in the mind and opinion of the expert these are enough to cloud the judgment another uh, point is the performance evaluation the performance evaluation of some uh, fingerprint examiner or even entire fingerprint bureaus have previously been assessed by the number of identification they have done. This creates unnecessary pressure on the examiner to identify the prints. Reasons of cognitive bias. Research indicated that human decision making is not nearly as rational as would like uh, to believe it to be decision making tendency is not based on rational perspective but clouded by heuristic and biased approach heuristic and bias uh, biases can cause human to make irrational decisions so what is heuristic and biased approach that can affect expert making decision within their own area of expertise a heuristic first of all is a strategy that people unconsciously use when they have the limited amount of time and information to make a decision it is a rule of thumb that implies the decision making process under real world condition that is complex uncertain or vague the term this heuristic and bias is basically used interchangeably. However, the difference is that heuristic describes as a process of making decisions and bias describes the outcome of this process. Okay. Next one is the confirmative, uh, confirmation bias. This is a tendency to test a hypothesis by looking for instances that confirm it rather than by searching for potentially falsify, uh, falsifying uh, occasions. It results from a heuristic based on expectation, the uh, natural tendency of human beings to see what they expect to see. Another one is a contextual bias. That occur when decision makers are influenced by exposure to extraneous information that is not necessary to make decision or examination. Fingerprint identification dom domain. For instance, fingerprint examiner are influenced by information that is outside the scope of whatever information is necessary to conduct their forensic testing. I give you one example. Uh, if a, exam, a fingerprint examiner is informed that the suspect whose fingerprint he is analyzing has confessed to the crime, this information may suggest to the examiner that the suspect is guilty and may thus lead to the examiner to ex, uh, expect uh, that the latent uh, print would at the scene of crime, would be found at the scene of crime. Uh, will uh, that will match the suspect print. In addition to confirmation bias and expectation bias, there is one overconfidence bias is there. That could affect fingerprint examiner's decision making. Decision makers subject to the overconfidence bias have an inflated belief in the accuracy of their knowledge, resulting in a mis- calibration between confidence and accuracy that can hamper judgment. Some other reasons behind the cognitive bias. Forensic scientists frequently analyze the evidences that the prosecution submits. They testify most often on the prosecution behalf. And they inevitably become the part of the effort to bring an offender to justice. This can potentially lead fingerprint examiner to adopt <coughs> prosecutional bias or an expectation that the prosecution take on the case will be confirmed. Second reason is forensic science laboratory procedure prohibit fingerprint examiner from including non-probability uh, judgment in their determination. 
they are permitted to choose from only three possible options like identification exclusion and in inclusive result like in identification 100% match exclusion 100% non match or in conclusive result thirdly fingerprint examiner making the initial determination of whether fingerprints match are constantly exposed to potentially biased domain extraneous information i I'm, i would like to give one example like five professionals uh, fingerprint examiner were giving a, a matching pair of fingerprints each of them received a pair of fingerprint that they themselves had previously concluded to, uh, to be the match furthermore each examiner had previously testified in the court that he or she could say with 100% uh, certainty that the particular pair of fingerprints matched now what happened the researcher then told the examiner to consider only fingerprints themselves in determining whether the fingerprint matched after being exposed to the domain extraneous information like this fingerprints is belongs to mayfield case so four out of five fingerprint examiners contradicted their previous conclusion in order uh, for an examiner to perform an analysis objectively they need to be even able, able to separate themselves from uh, any outside information like for example uh, knowing the name of the suspect and their past criminal record may cause a fingerprint examiner to unintentionally focus more on that uh, person prints rather than on any others so fourth one is the re uh, examination after even after the initial uh, fingerprint examiner have made their determinations of whether fingerprints match subsequent due to exposure to the domain extraneous information could bias them against later considering that they may have made a mistake and thus re examining their initial conclusion to look for error that previously discussed in the example also fifth one fingerprint examiner engaged in the routine practice of independently verifying an initial examiner's work which is undoubtedly a good practice in theory and are also often exposed to potentially biasing domain extraneous information specifically when uh, making his or her determination the verifying examiner is frequently already aware of the fact that he or she is verifying an initial examiner's conclusion as well as of the result of the initial examiner's work or result okay uh, as ethan dorar uh, has pointed out unintentional error due to cognitive biases are Uh, at least uh, debatably even more problematic uh, than uh, our intentional error from uh, for the following reasons like since cognitive bias affect all fingerprint examiners they are relatively very common second is the examiner who actually believe in their mistaken conclusion are more convincing in court and are thus more dangerous little action has Uh, been taken to fight cognitive bias because examiner have been reluctant to acknowledge that these bias even ex exist they are not ready to accept it that cognitive bias is even exist accordingly the latent uh, prints are uh, uh, latent prints are small distorted incomplete are at the highest risk for for bias cognitive bias is a persistent and constant part of our life that can affect us in many ways we often do not realize we are being affected because it is a subconscious occurrence it is defined as the ways in which 
uh, human uh, perceptions and judgment can be shaped by factors other than those relevant to the decision at hand. There are certain debiasing techniques. So what is debiasing technique? That refers to any technique that is designed to prevent or mitigate cognitive bias. Although some debiasing techniques have had mixed success, much uh, the research has demonstrated that debiasing technique can indeed, uh, indeed be effective in mitigating cognitive bias. So three debiasing techniques intended to correct flaws in forensic scientists' decision-making tasks. First one is the sequential unmasking. Uh, as previously discussed, the fact that fingerprint examiners in sub -lab some laboratories are constantly exposed to dom domain extraneous information is problematic because exposure to such information can bias the fingerprint examiner result. Forensic science has established partially blind procedure during the verification phase. This process is not in place in the majority of the forensic science laboratories. And no such procedures for bl uh, blinding initial fingerprints examiner are systematically in place. In our laboratories, using sequential unmasking procedure, during both the analysis and verification phase, all the information should be unmasked. That is, that is not to say or to reveal to the examiner in sequence or reveal only when it is necessary. Any unnecessary exposure to the potentially biased domain extraneous information should thereby be prevented. Second one is the evidence lineup. It is uh, not uncommon to find forensic scientists who uh, generally act as an arm of prosecution because we are dealing the case from prosecution side. So this has the potential to cause finger, fingerprint examiner to adapt a prosecutional bias. Okay, so ideally, however, fingerprint examiner would approach each task completely objectively in order to come to the most rational conclusion or think uh, as a way of defense side or behave as an expert of defense so it will uh, your result will be more objective in an evidence lineup of forensic scientists would be even multiple uh, given multiple piece of evidences one of which is the piece of evidences in question and rest of the of which are similar looking points. The forensic scientist would be blind to which piece of evidence is, is the one in question. So this method helps an examiner to give unbiased and free from prosecutional bias results. Second one is the competitive self-regulation that would involve in several uh, forensic science laboratories in each uh, jurisdiction compete with each other. This usually not happen, but if this come in practice, so it will give a better result. Some evidence would be randomly chosen for a duplicate testing at com competing laboratory. For example, uh, for a small portion of randomly chosen fingerprint, the same latent print if uh, we sent uh, to the competing laboratory in the same jurisdiction for analysis. So the finger, uh, the forensic scientists will not know whether the evidence uh, they are analyzing is subject to duplicate testing or they would be aware only that duplicate testing sometimes randomly takes place. So other debiasing techniques like simplifying the decision, allowing more time to complete the task, using cognitive feedbacks, promoting general bias awareness, implementing consider an alternative strategies, employing perceptive taking policies, enlisting a devil's advocate, emphasizing accountability. So these are some other debiasing techniques because the uh, 
examiner take decision in very hurry uh, i i would like to share one thing when i uh, go to visit to the crime scene so police officers keep asking uh, the leading question that madam is this a case of suicide ma'am this is a case of suicide na so without uh, within a time within a minute they keep on asking this question so this will create a biasing in the judgment or examination of crime scene so uh, uh, this is my suggestion to everyone uh, first just examine uh, the fingerprint um, objectively then give any conclusion and not jump uh, on the conclusion in a minute so take some time okay so i uh, here i am conclude my lecture that these concepts and issues are rarely considered implemented in the forensic science setup it is imperative to create awareness along with continued research and training in the meantime forensic science laboratory fingerprint examiners and law makers should keep these techniques in mind in pursuing reforms framed around a cognitive understanding of fingerprint examiners decision making thank you that's it from my end uh, these are certain uh, research paper if you would, if you would like to uh, take information regarding fingerprints which is published in journal of forensic science and legal medicine forensic science research medicine science in the law egyptian journal of forensic science asian journal of science malaysian journal of forensic science uh, and other publication of my research team is in nature the lancet nature medicine bmc report bmj injury prevention uh, saudi journal of biological sciences jpc journal of planar chromatography so now i would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to deliver the keynote in this conference uh, and uh, i would like to mention that they are putting in a lot of efforts to organize these conferences even even during this difficult time so thank you so much dr ranjit